Do you know what I would love right about now? If everyone would just shut up about Tesla. Will I buy Monster Beverage stock in 2019? That is the question that I'm going to be answering in today's video. Uh, this is an individual stock analysis of the American company Monster Beverage. And as always in these individual stock analysis videos, you can expect that we'll start off by going through a little bit of a look on the business itself, its industry, its competition. We'll focus in and zoom in on one key business factor that's really important to assessing this business in particular. Then we'll jump into looking at the economic moat. Does this business have any kind of long-term competitive advantage over other businesses in its industry. We'll then have a look at management. And when we're looking at management, we're looking at uh, management's integrity. Do we trust management and also their ability to invest within the business and keep debts to a low level so that we're not going to lose our entire investment. And of course, towards the end of the video, what everyone is looking forward to, which is I will put a value on how much I think Monster Beverage is worth and therefore how much we should be willing to pay for it. And of course, therefore, uh, whether or not uh, I would say that it would be a good investment at the current price. Now, of course, in these videos, these are not recommendations. I've just picked a random stock uh, so that I can show you an example of how to apply the investing principle that I teach on my platform and on my YouTube channel. So do not take anything in this video to be financial advice or recommendations. It is simply an example of how you can apply the same process to any stock that you're looking to invest in. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into the video and we'll start by talking about Monster Beverage's business. What is Monster Beverage? Monster Beverage is a beverage company. No surprises there. And uh, they own a number of different energy drink brands, but essentially the Monster Energy brand makes up about 90% of their sales. So a significant proportion of the Monster Beverage business is their primary brand, which is Monster Energy. So many of you would already know what a Monster Energy drink is. It's just a canned energy drink ready to serve and Monster Beverage sells these to distributors mainly. So they're selling to distributors and then those distributors then go out and uh, sell them on to uh, grocery stores and uh, all, of, all of the different outlets that actually sell them to customers. Um, and Monster Beverage does do a little bit of selling to direct outlets, selling to convenience stores like 7-Eleven or selling to grocery stores. But for the most part, they're selling to distributors. And they have one major distributor, which is also a significant shareholder in the company. And that is Coca-Cola. So Coca-Cola holds a significant amount of the Monster Beverage stock. And they also have a partnership agreement whereby Coca-Cola distributes a significant proportion of Monster Beverages drinks. Now, an interesting side note about the partnership between Monster Beverage and the Coca-Cola company is that within their distribution agreement, the Coca-Cola company has agreed that they will not directly compete against any of Monster Beverage's energy drink products. So they cannot produce and distribute an energy drink product. However, interestingly enough, Coca-Cola is coming out with a coffee flavored Coke drink, which uh, in my opinion, if you have a carbonated drink and it has sugar in it and it has caffeine in it, that's an energy drink. So those two businesses, Monster Beverage, which we're looking at today, and the Coca-Cola company are currently in a dispute to decide whether or not the Coca-Cola company is allowed to produce and distribute their own uh, drink. And the reason why that exception is in that agreement makes perfect sense when you think about it, because if the Coca-Cola company owns a small part of Monster Beverage and they have an agreement that the Coca-Cola company is distributing most of Monster Beverage's drinks, then if Coca-Cola was to come out with a competing product, Coca-Cola would obviously uh, preferentially treat their own drink over the Monster Beverage drink. So if there was an opportunity to get it into more stores, they would put their own drink as a priority higher than the Monster Beverage drink, which they're only getting a small portion of the profits of because they only own a small part of Monster Beverage's company. So that is an interesting dispute, which we will have to see play out. Now, management of Monster Beverage have said that uh, between the two businesses, there is a very uh, non-hostile agreement they're very friendly with each other and they're just trying to work out whether or not uh, Coca-Cola is in breach. Uh, however, if that partnership was destroyed,
void in some way if Monster Beverage could no longer rely on the Coca-Cola distribution centers, then that would be something that would significantly impact Monster Beverage's uh, company. So that is something that you need to watch out for if you're going to be investing in this company. Now, I just want to talk about one key business indicator that you need to be watching with this company if you're going to be investing in it in the future. Key business indicators is something that's really important to focus on because every business has their unique parts that uh, have unique metrics that you need to be following and that you need to understand what they mean. And the same is true for Monster Beverage. And one of their key business indicators that you should be watching if you're going to be investing in Monster Beverage or if you are an investor in Monster Beverage is their net sales per case. Average net sales per case is a measure of the average selling price of a unit case. The number is calculated by dividing the total sales by the unit case volume. This number increasing over time in combination with increasing unit case volume would indicate despite price increases, the company is selling more product. And this key business indicator can be used to assess the economic moat or the competitive advantage that this company might have. Because if a beverage company is able to increase their prices, yet they're, they're still selling more units, then it means that people are not impacted by the price of the product. They just want to buy your specific product. So if you change the price from $3 to $3.50 and more people are still buying it, it means that price has no impact on their buying decision and that indicates that they have a compelling brand moat. By the way guys, if you're interested in learning about the four step investing process that I'm going through in this video, uh, then I actually put together a free 20 minute training video on my website, which you can check out via the first link in the description below. This is the exact four step process that I've used to consistently outperform the market. So I wanted to share it with you guys and it's completely free. So again, if you want access to that, you can get it by the first link in the description below. But let's continue on and look at the economic moat of Monster Beverage. So when we're looking at economic moat, what we mean is we're trying to identify something within the business that gives it an advantage over other companies. And with a beverage company, it's going to be very difficult for someone like this to have a wide economic moat, something that almost compels customers to come back. However, uh, there is a couple of advantages that this kind of company does have. One of them is their compelling brand moat. Um, it's a very recognizable brand. And not only is the Monster Energy a recognizable brand, but the Monster Beverage Company as a whole owns a number of different energy drink brands. And if you look at a shelf within a grocery store of all of the energy drinks, a significant proportion of it is, comp uh, is brands that are owned by Monster Beverage. And that gives them a huge advantage because it means that people are more likely going to buy one of their brands over one of the smaller competitors. It's also possible to argue that they have a strategic advantage over other companies because of their partnership with the Coca-Cola company. And everyone knows how uh, prevalent Coca-Cola is. And that is in part because Coca-Cola has built such a good distribution service and Monster Beverage is taking advantage of that in their partnership. So you could argue that that is a strategic advantage. However, that partnership might not last forever. So that is something that could go away and it's something that you need to think about and that you need to discount into the intrinsic value if you're going to be valuing and then therefore investing in this company. But with that said, if we go over and do a quantitative analysis, looking at their numbers to see if there is a moat backed up in the numbers, we can see that over the long term, their sales growth has been very consistent at about 11 to 14%. Earnings per share growth has been fantastic, sitting at around 20 to 25%. Equity growth over the long term has been uh, in the mid 20s and almost 30% over five years. However, in the last couple of years, equity has been declining. So we would want to look into what the reason is behind that. And then the free cash flow has been outstanding again, uh, hovering somewhere between uh, 20 and 30% per year compounded over the long term. And so those numbers are outstanding. There's no doubt about that. So there's no doubt that over the past 10 years, they did have some kind of competitive advantage. And it's likely that part of that is their strong branding presence in the energy drink market. Now, 
in terms of the a branding moat, uh, a branding moat is one that I would always consider narrow. So it's one that can be changed over time. It's one that can be eroded by newer energy drink companies coming into the market and being more popular among the user base. So while these numbers are impressive and they give us confidence that they can continue at least at a moderate pace into the future, uh, I would be very careful at estimating that they can do the exact same growth for the next 10 years because that is an outstanding period and as I said they it's not as if they had an outstanding period and then they have a compelling economic moat that is going to ensure that they can do it for the next 10 years a branding moat just doesn't protect us that much so we would still need to be conservative in our growth estimations of how quickly this company could grow their cash flows into the future the next part of our analysis is to look at the management we need to assess management and we always look at management in a couple of different ways we're first looking at if we trust management we if, if we think they have integrity and that they're being honest with us in their, in their conference calls and in their annual reports. Uh, and then we also want to look at their skill. Are they good at investing within the business and are they good at managing debt? Now, for the, in the interest of time, we won't cover all of these. So we're just going to zoom in on the return on invested capital and see how effective their internal investments have been and what kind of rate of return we could expect that this company can compound their internal cash flows over the long term. According to Macro Trends, management has been able to earn a high return on invested capital for the past 12 years, ranging from somewhere between 15% and 60%. However, we can also see that there's been a consistent downtrend in the efficiency of their investments, which indicates that each additional dollar invested is less effective than the previous dollar. Management is slowly running out of investment opportunities as they have penetrated most of the major global beverage markets. So strong return on investment over that 10 year period, however, declining over time. Uh, and that's to be expected when a company gets as big as Monster Beverage in that industry. They currently have a market cap of about 35 billion. So they are a massive competitor in the overall beverage industry. And we shouldn't expect that they can continue to compound at such a huge rate as they have in the past, because many of the markets that allowed them to sort of many of the markets that they recently entered into, which allowed them to have that massive amount of growth, 20, 30% over the long term, those there's no more markets that big for them to break into. So they're not going to see any more huge booms uh, in the amount of uh, revenue that they can produce. Uh, and if they're going to produce uh, much significantly larger amounts of cash flow, then they're going to be needing to reduce their costs rather than focusing so much on uh, breaking into new markets and increasing their revenue. So just to summarize so far, before we get into to the intrinsic valuation. Uh, it's a great business with some kind of branding moat and possibly some strategic advantages baked into their business, which has allowed it to compete successfully at another level uh, over the past 10 years. However, I wouldn't be overly confident that they could do it for the next 10 years, uh, but the fact that they've done it in the past 10 years does give us a little bit of confidence. Then looking at management, they've been effectively investing over that time, which is why they've been able to compound their uh, revenue, their say uh, their revenue, their earnings per share, their free cash flow and their equity at such a high rate. However, that is declining. So we would want to make sure that that trend doesn't continue to the point where they're starting to get a return on invested capital of below 10%. So that's something we would want to be watching. So with the economic moat and the management assessed, and we're getting pretty good green lights from those directions, although it's not perfect, of course, uh, we can now go in and try and do an intrinsic valuation, try and calculate how much cash we can expect to get out of this company over the next 10 years, and therefore put a price on how much we're willing to pay for those cash flows. To do this, we need two numbers. First, we need to calculate a growth rate that this company can achieve over the next 10 years. For example, if we go from 2008 to 2018, which includes the global financial crisis, the US domestic alternative beverage industry grew from 26 billion to 55 billion, which represents a growth rate of just under 8%. So that is one of the growth rates that we could use in our models. And it's going to be the growth rate that we're going to use in today's model. And then we need to estimate how much cash was returned to shareholders in the previous year in 2018 and we do this by taking the operating cash flow and subtracting uh, capital expenditures for maintenance of property plant and equipment and in this example we're going to assume that all of monster beverages uh, capital expenditures were for maintenance so what we will be doing is we're taking a uh, 1.16 uh, billion, which was their operating cash flow, and we're subtracting 62 million, and that gives us cash flow for owners of 1.1 billion. 
And then we can plug these into a discounted cash flow model with a 3% discount rate, which is approximately the current 10 year treasury yield, the risk free rate that we could achieve. And that gives us an intrinsic value of $31.3 billion for the entire company. Now the current market capitalization of Monster Beverage is about $35 billion. So that means that this company would be overvalued, but not significantly overvalued based on the growth estimates that we've used. But of course, as you would know, we don't even want to pay intrinsic value. We want to pay at least a 50% discount to intrinsic value so that we make sure that we're not overpaying for this company and that we can ensure that we can allow for errors in our valuation. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And if you did, make sure you leave a like and let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. I always love having discussions with you guys down there in the comments after the video goes live. So please do that. But for now, guys, I'll see you in the next video.